the two DARPA programs that uh, that are in the works, do you have any requirements on the book for satellite servicing or launching in such a short time period? I think it's fair to say that that's something that we're interested in. I mean, it's not something that's a part of, you know, the current requirements baseline. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know if you want to speak further about that in terms yeah, no, of how you see that no, that's technology great, that's transitioning. Great, yeah, that's a great question. So I'll, I'll be more specific. So DARPA um, typically doesn't be, begin programs with big R, big requirements in mind, because if there's a, if there's a, a well-documented requirement, typically the services, Army, Air Force, Marine Corps, are actively working on systems to meet those requirements. So we typically advance, you know, do things in advance of that, trying to take the technical question off the table of what might be. And then if we're successful as part of the program, we'll work with the U.S. Air Force in this case to try and transition the capability. So if we're successful with XS-1, that's part of what we'll be doing over the next 24 months is working with the Air Force saying, hey, this capability now exists. Is that something you want to explore, that, that requirement space? And I think the, the same thing in terms of uh, robotic servicing for geostationary satellites, the reason that we, that we chose a commercial partners and approach uh, is because we want to see the technical risk reduced for national security purposes, but it appeared that the most near-term application of this is going to be in the commercial sector. And so in this case, it appeared the best transition path, as opposed to having a requirement, was to work with the private sector, the commercial industry, which is exactly the comment I made earlier about um, one of the best things I think the department can do now going forward with robust commercial space space is figuring out how can we work together on things to new challenges. So I would imagine that in both the programs, as they evolve, We'll continue to work with the Air Force on trying to figure out what's the best transition path forward.